Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel. Today we're moving on to episode 2 of my introductory series on design in CAD. In this series we're going to be using the in-context parametric and solid modeling features of Fusion 360 to design an electronics enclosure. In the first episode we introduced the project and created our reference geometry from this, the headphone amplifier, our piece of electronics. If you haven't watched that episode already then I suggest you do that first. In this episode we're going to be taking the geometry that we created last time and referencing that and using in-context modeling features to design the top half of the enclosure. So carrying on from where we left our Fusion 360 model, we have our main file and one component which is our headphone amp. Now we need to create a new component, make sure you create it from here rather than here because we don't want to create it within the other one. And this is going to be the amp enclosure top, so the top half of the enclosure. And make sure it's the active component you'll see the original component has gone slightly invisible. If you want to hide it completely, you can. Let's start off by creating a sketch on the XY plane. Now to make the selection process a little bit easier, we are going to rotate 180 degrees so we can see the bottom face. From here, we're going to start by using the projection tool. A projection is basically taking lines from other sketches and bringing them onto your live sketch. So we start the projection tool, the shortcut is P, and we select the outer lines here. That brings those lines onto our current sketch. If we hide that original geometry, you can see we have a sketch now with those four lines. From there, we're going to use the offset tool because we want to expand these lines out all very slightly. So the letter O on the keyboard to start offset tool, make sure we have all the lines selected, and now we need to choose our offset. Our offset has got to be the sum of a couple of things. So from the outside of the PCB, you have your clearance, which is a gap between the PCB and the wall of the enclosure, and then the thickness of the enclosure wall. For me, I'm going to have a one millimeter gap and a wall thickness of 1.6 millimeters. So the total offset is 2.6 millimeters. And there we have it. So now we've got that line for the outside of our enclosure. We're going to spin this around just so we have a better idea of where we're looking and extrude. So hopefully you're familiar, the letter E, and we're going to extrude the whole box. Hang on, there you go. We're not going to do it 1.5 millimeters. We're going to start from the profile plane, which is the plane on which we drew the sketch. We're going to go two sides. The first side, we're going to go a certain distance. So we're going to select the top face here. And again, we're going to offset it. Make sure you change your chain faces to this one, the extend faces option because otherwise it doesn't work. And your offset again needs to be 2.6. In fact, we could do 2.1, so instead of a one mil clearance, it's a half mil clearance. I think we'll do that. So 2.1 millimeter offset. Again, no need for a taper angle. For side two, we're gonna do pretty much exactly the same thing. So changing from distance to object, offset to there. Offset, sorry, is 2.1. Taper angle, still zero, and we're going to create a new body. Obviously, it won't work unless you click the extend faces. Okay, so now that might have seemed like a very complicated way just to create a box, but it's not just a box. It is a parametric box. So if you were to go back to your original reference geometry and change it completely, this box would stay exactly the same size to still be an enclosure, which is pretty useful. Now, I'm sure you've noticed that this box is in fact solid and solid things, well, they're not great as enclosures. So we need to use the shell command, which you can find in the modify section. A shell basically turns something from a solid to a shell like this. It cuts away the inside based on the face that you clear it from. You can clear from multiple faces. So if we did this one and the end one, or if we did the two ends only, then it would make a big hole all the way through. And we select the wall thickness. So that ensures we have a constant wall thickness all the way around, regardless of how this box changes dimensions, if it ever does. And from that, we click OK. So now we have this nice empty shell that we can put stuff in. 
Obviously there's still collisions through the walls, but we'll get to that in a moment. So the next thing we're going to do is create some pedestals on the inside. You'll notice that, ignoring the fact that it doesn't fit, if we were to try and put this headphone amp in the box, it would collide. The, the top of the components would just fall all the way to the bottom. There's nothing to stop them. We want some pedestals to touch here. So when this comes down, they mount here and we can screw through to hold them in place. So to do that, we do actually need to hide this original geometry so we can select this face and then create a sketch. On the sketch, we're going to create a rectangle. And that rectangle is going to be eight millimeters square. So select one dimension to be eight millimeters and then holding a couple of edges, we make those two equal. And now, as before, one dimension does everything. Brilliant. Now we want to make sure we can mirror that same feature to all four corners. So as before, a couple of construction lines to help us, making them as construction if you want to. It's not actually essentially in Fusion 360 because you can select the geometry which determines the feature rather than in SolidWorks where you have to just construction everything that you don't want featured. And then we use the mirror tool, sketch, mirror. We want to create from these four lines, mirrored across that line. And then we start the same tool, start the same tool again, select those four and these four and mirror across this line. Now again, we've still only used one dimension and we have four boxes in all four corners. Now we're going to do another extrude. So you start the extrude tool, select the four faces you want to extrude. And again, we need to determine how far these pieces are going to go. We want this to come up exactly to the point of here because we've determined already the clearance to these components. So we want contact on this PCB face. So the way we do that is we first hide the component that we're working on because otherwise it gets in the way of selecting things. And then we can select by changing the extent to object, select the face of the PCB that we're extending to, show again the original geometry that we're currently working on, change again to extended faces otherwise it doesn't work make sure it's on join zero millimeter offset and that should be good and there you have it we'll hide the original geometry and you can see those four pedestals in the corner which will now contact the pcb again this is parametric we've only really set the size of the outside of that pedestal not how high it is or anything like that so if the box will change its size and the PCB changes size and the height and everything changes, then it will still fit exactly the same. Now we've got those pedestals, but we've got nothing to screw into. So we need some holes. We could have put the holes on that original sketch, but I didn't want that hole coming down as far as that face because that top surface is not that thick. So to do that, first, obviously, we need to create a sketch. Now that geometry is in the way again, so hide it, create the sketch, and we will need to show it again. Fusion 360 seems to struggle a bit with finding the center of a hole that's not already on the sketch, center of a circle that's not already on the sketch. So to overcome that, we're just gonna use the projection tool. So P to start that, and then just click the four circles once to bring them onto the sketch. Now you have four circles, let's set them to construction because we don't wanna actually use them. And we're just gonna use the center points of them to draw our own circles. C for circle, one, two, three, four. You'll notice they're obviously far too large at the moment. First, we're gonna make them all equal, so they're all the same size, and then just a single dimension to set the size. I've used 2.9 millimeters because I know that's a good size for M3 to tap directly into, although it's strictly not a self-tapping screw. In soft plastic, it's just fine. So 2.9 millimeters for the hole. Now we're going to extrude that hole downwards because we want to create a hole. We don't want it coming upwards. So again, E to extrude. One, two, three, four. And now when you do a cut, you need to make sure, one, that the operation is set to cut and your distance always has to be negative. So I'm gonna go minus eight millimeters. And that's gonna create a nice deep hole. So now that we've got those pedestals to hold the PCB, the other limitation for us getting this in here is, well, the fact that the front panel is still completely solid. So to overcome that, let's create another new sketch. 
And again, we're going to use the project tool because we already have these. And again, we're going to use the construction. And then again, we're going to draw some more circles. Oops, daisy. Doesn't matter how big they are. Make sure you select the edges, make those two equal, because again, they are the same. And this one can be whatever for now. These two need to be seven millimeters, and this one needs to be 8.5. Now, again, use the cut tool, because we're making a hole. Cut is a feature from the extrude. So just select one, two, three, change the feature to cut, extent to object, and we're going to go for the back face of this. So again, if you were to change your thickness of your shell, then you don't need to change this feature. It already knows that it needs to go from this face to this face. It doesn't matter how far apart they are, it just goes that distance. It's also worth changing your objects to cut, because at the moment it's shown, uh, at the moment the headphone amp is shown, so it's inclined to cut that body as well. We're not interested in that, we just want to do the enclosure, so we're just going to untick the headphone amp one and keep the amp enclosure ticked. So that's excellent, we've got some holes in the front, but now we need the same on the side. So create a sketch, start the projection tool, project the circle, click OK, change it to construction, create a circle, dimension the circle. In this case, we need it a lot bigger because it has this big plastic connector on the power jack, so we're going to go with an 11 millimeter diameter. E for extrude, select the circle. Ooh, why is it? Come on, thank you. And then to object, cut this direction, objects to cut, not the headphone amp. Okay, so we're looking pretty good there now. We've got a way to put our PCB in, it's not going to go too far, and we've got some nice connector holes on the front, so everything should fit quite nicely. The next thing we need to do is indicate which one of those three and a half mil jacks is the input and which one is the output. You could do this in loads of different ways. I mean, all you need really is a mark on one and no mark on the other, but I'm gonna go very basic, very simple, and put an I on one and an O on the other, standing for input or output. So create a sketch, and in the sketch, we're gonna add some text. Select a position for the text to go, and just type in the letter that you want. I think this one is O. Yes, yeah, yes, the left-hand side is output. I'm gonna make it bold, and change the height to seven millimeters. I'm just gonna move this directly over the hole, and that's good enough. For the other hole, again, create a new feature with text, place it down, I, bold, okay, oh, seven millimeters tool, and just drag it centrally above the hole, approximately in line with the O. And just like everything else, extrude. This time, selecting the whole sketch. We only want to cut out a small way. We don't want to go all the way through. You could, but that's not really what the look I'm going for. So I'm going to go minus 0.4. And obviously we're cutting, but this time, because we're not interfering with any other bodies, it only selects that one object to cut. So there you have it. We've got a nice label on the front just to show which one's the output and which one's the input. The last thing we need to do for this is add some fillets and some chamfers. Now, many people love their very luxurious looking fillets and chamfers. I like to do it simple. So I don't want to go over the top. We'll get a F for fillet and select these four outer edges. The radius we want here is two millimeters. That just stops that I mean, if you have linear advance, it's not so much of a problem, but having a nice curvature stops the nozzle stopping at the corners and having that weird bulge. A fillet does also look a little bit nicer on those corners. So that looks pretty good. We don't have to do anything on the top. If you want to add your own detailed design, add a chamfer to the edge, maybe if you have trouble prying it off the bed, but I'm going to leave mine just completely flat. I think it's going to look quite nice just with that sharp edge. On the inside, I do want a number of fillets around the edge of these pedestals. So let's bring up the fillet tool again and start plugging in where those locations need to be. I'm gonna hide the headphone amp just to make it easier to select the areas I need to select.
I'm going to use a 1.2 mil fillet and again it stops that bulking at the corners and should help the speed of the print very slightly. If you do do a chamfer on the top outside edge I would recommend you also do one on the inside bottom inside top edge this one here the one opposite it because you want to try and keep your wall thickness consistent so if you're starting with your wall thickness like oh it's really difficult if you're starting with a two mil wool thickness all the way around and you end up cutting a portion off the outside, you're gonna have this corner that comes in really close to the outside face. So make sure you put a chamfer here so your wool sort of goes like this and then like this and oops, you get the picture. Make sure you have a consistent wool thickness. One last thing I do wanna do is have a little chamfer around these holes. Not very big, just slight, just to stop any ghosting that might occur. And that's just gonna be 0.5 millimeters. Adds a nice little touch to those outer holes. Saving the file, and that's it for the top of our enclosure. So that brings it close to episode two. Let's have a quick recap. In the first episode, we introduced the project and created our reference geometry from the headphone amplifier. In this episode, we've used our in-context modeling techniques and solid modeling design features to create an enclosure, the top half of the enclosure, over that reference geometry. In the next episode, we'll use some similar and slightly different techniques to design the bottom half of the enclosure, the base. Thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Follow on Twitter and Instagram. And I shall see you in episode three.